Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Today is going to be fun. We are going to look at an all-in-one system from Digit Now. And this is a system we looked at a couple of years ago, but I thought we would give it another look-see. Back then we had a couple of concerns. It wasn't terrible, but we had a couple of concerns and I wanted to reevaluate this and see if we can recommend this as a good beginner system. It plays a lot of different formats. It looks like a lot of fun. So let's get into it, you guys. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Recordology. Okay, and today we're looking at this very interesting Digit Now turntable all in one system with speakers. It plays CDs, tapes, radio, and a variety of other USB SD type formats. Let's check it out. But before we do that, you may be saying to yourself, man, this looks really familiar. Didn't you review this two years ago? And indeed we did. Thought we would take another look at it. There was a couple of concerns with that. It was still a pretty cool device. So I wanted to see, we always talk about, is this an issue with just this one or is it a design issue? This will help us answer that question because this is off that same assembly line. Let's see how this one performs. We'll test it out top to bottom, unbox it, all that good stuff. Works good. I love doing that. It's so much quicker than the old way of unboxing. Okay, so we've got everything out of the packaging for the most part. Let's start taking a look at things in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's start with these speakers. They feel fairly lightweight. They are some sort of composite wood. They got a good grain, that textured grain that I like. And on the bottom, we've got foam pads. On the back, it's just this cable coming out. Let's see what it is. So it's an RCA jack. Then on the front, we've got the grill, and it looks like that's just an open, it's possible there's a tweeter in there, not 100% sure. Okay, the grill comes off, that's kind of surprising. And if we look inside, we can see it's just a hole, which actually I prefer that over trying to fit a fake looking tweeter in there. So this is a single way speaker system. It just is that single dome, mid-range or hopefully full range speaker and got rubber surround. It is a paper cone with a chrome colored dust cap on there. I suppose this would act as a, as a base port. I don't, yeah, there's no hole on the back for a base port. So that may actually serve some acoustic function. Yeah, may not be a, a bad speaker at all. If I remember right, the sound quality from what we heard on the first one was surprisingly decent. So it's kind of cool that they include, wow, this is actually a pretty heavy what material is that i guess it's plywood this is surprisingly heavy it's a speaker grill with a couple of holes on it and the black fabric looks not half bad when it's on there of course you have to line it up right based on looks and looks alone we might be onto something here so let's uh, keep looking now let's take a look at the main unit okay fairly compact considering all that's happening with this unit it looks like it's a laminate fiberboard or possibly an MDF type of material on the back. Oh, that's masonite. You can tell that's masonite there. We do have the connections for the speakers. Don't get excited and think that's a line level output. Those will be amplified. So don't go plugging that into a set of powered speakers. We've got an FM antenna. This, for the sake of clarity, is the M504 multifunction record player and oh, so, so much more. Obviously the power supply. And if we rotate it around on this side, you can see, yes, indeed, it does have the cassette deck or a cassette player in there, QC sticker on there. It's been a while since we re reviewed a unit with one of these in there. Obviously, there'll be no Dolby or anything like that. There'll be a Tanishin type of mechanism. They give you uh, a mini audio cord, which is good. We've got a warranty thank you card. We've got uh, setup instructions with belt replacement and picture instructions on there. It does have a remote control. Just what we need in our lives, guys. One more remote control. I don't know about you, but I still am inundated with remote controls. The user manual. And while we have the user manual, let's take a look and see about some of the specifications. Okay, so I spent a couple of minutes reading through this. It's a good user manual. There's actually uh, some instructions on how to replace the stylus 
optimizing performance, et cetera, et cetera. What there is not, however, are, are really any specifications, which is a bummer. So I'm guessing those speakers are probably two, three, maybe five watts each. And that's not entirely unexpected in a unit such as this. This is an entry level system. This is for somebody who wants to just get started. Maybe they've only enjoyed music previously on their phone. The whole idea of physical media is new. And we must never ever forget that those people play a very important part in this whole hobby of ours. And I wanna make sure that we're always welcoming to them and make sure that they understand that we're just happy to have them in the hobby. There's too much gatekeeping, especially in vinyl, but in all of audio, there's too much gatekeeping. I really wanna get away from that. So I wanna keep focusing on the entry level stuff. It's our bread and butter on this channel. It's what we started. That was really you know, what we've always been about is the entry level. So I wanna keep it real and realize that this is a great example of a system somebody might come across either as a gift or something they're looking for themselves. And I just wanna test it out on that level. We're not gonna compare it to the Technics SL1200s and things of that nature. We're gonna compare it to just getting started. Is it a good product for people getting started? So with that mindset, let us progress. I think we've got it completely unwrapped. I'm guessing, yep, there's a peel off layer there. So we've got that nice reflective shine on the front. It looks good. It looks really good. And um, I guess we should start with the turntable and work ourselves down. We'll kind of give an overview of the feature set at first, and then we will test each one out. All right, let's start with the turntable. It's going to be our familiar friend, the Skywind type of mechanism. This particular variant is not shock mounted. Some people actually get concerned when they get a suitcase player or an all-in-one and they, they it's kind of spongy and they're like, oh my gosh, is it supposed to do that? It's actually a good thing because it helps isolate vibrations. However, at this level of equipment, especially with detached speakers, I wouldn't worry about it. You're not gonna, dampening, sound dampening is not gonna be a huge issue here. And when it comes to skipping, like I always say, if your records are skipping, the first thing to check is to make sure that this lift shelf is gently pushed down and out of the way of the tone arm. Those hang up quite a bit. So we've got our 45 adapter right there. And it's going to be this variant that we see a lot. And yeah, that works. However, if you wanna up your game in the 45 RPM department, you might wanna try the official Recordology 45 adapter. Now available wherever Recordology 45 adapters are sold. This is a limited edition, by the way. We uh, have a print run of this. It's gonna last for a little bit. This will be an ongoing color. We'll always have the uh, trademark orange and the other colors will trade out. We've got quite a bit of, uh, of PLA available right now with, in a variety of colors. So look forward to releasing other exclusive colors throughout the year. That being said, uh, this will be a three-speed turntable. Let's go ahead and look a little closer down this region. Also adds a nice dash of color to any record player. Let's go ahead and take the twisty ties off. Anytime you are storing a turntable, and especially anytime you're moving a turntable, just take a bread tie or one of these twisty ties, and uh, it's a perfect place to twist it around this rest post right here. This one's on there really, really good. And that will protect it from flying off in transit. This one actually has a little loop down here molded into the plastic specifically for this purpose. And unclipping that will give us use of the lift. Now, this is the first thing, I think I already answered my question, but this is uh, the first thing I want to test is the damping of the tone arm descent because before the previous unit had no damping whatever, so it didn't, it dropped like a rock. When you lower this, it just went down. So here we go, <laughs> same thing. No damping whatsoever. It just drops. So, I mean, it's not a huge, huge deal. My first beginner record player that I got didn't even have that. It didn't even have a cueing lever. So you had to, you know, control it by the tone arm lift on the front. But this with the cueing lever, you can control the descend by just gently raising and lowering it. No big deal. But it is nice to be able just to flick the switch and have it descend gently. So that issue apparently doesn't cross the scope of their QC. You can see another QC sticker up there. I would recommend, if the manufacturer happens to be watching this, 
don't know if they are, but if you're watching this, I would recommend uh, adding a damped uh, cueing lift on this so that you know you can get a little bit more graceful descend on that. Now I wonder if we were to add, that'd be an interesting project, add our own damping fluid in there if it's got the necessary hardware. I don't know if it has to be like a sealed piston in there or what, but that would be uh, something to think about. Also down here we have a couple of switches. We got the auto start and stop switch, or I should say the auto stop switch. This will either allow the turntable to stop spinning when the needle gets to the end of the groove, the end of the record, and it just stops spinning to protect your record, protect your stylus, or if you have that off, it'll just spin indefinitely, be completely manual. And then the three speeds select here, 33, 45, 78. We're gonna test all three speeds for accuracy, and that will be fun. Of course, we have our Chuo Denshi type of clone ceramic cartridge. We can see that this does have a pretty decent stylus housing. We have a metal cantilever. We've got a bridge, the rubber boot. So this is the upgraded variant. However, you will see a very prominent reddish hue to the needle itself, the stylus itself. Therefore, it is safe to assume that this is indeed a ruby slash sapphire stylus. So about 100 plays before it needs to be replaced, upgraded with another similar type, or you can upgrade to a diamond to get about 1,000 plays out of it. It won't really sound any different if you upgrade to diamond, but it'll be more durable. That's the main thing. But this shouldn't sound half bad. Assuming it's properly impedance matched, that's the number one thing for sound quality out of a ceramic. A lot of folks are baffled by this. They're like, where's all the buttons? You know, the transport controls on the front of the device don't seem to be doing anything. No, because from a mechanical standpoint, everything you need to control the tape is right here. If you can believe it, it's one button. So you take your cassette and you insert it with a little bit of force. Kind of usually goes up at an angle like that and it'll ka-chunk into place. Now, it's automatic start it will start playing automatically. There's nothing you need to do to make it play. And if you want to fast forward, you just take this button that just popped out and push it in halfway. It is now fast forwarding. When you get to where you want or the end, or you just want to take your tape out, you push the button in the rest of the way and ka-chunk comes out again and you pull the tape out. Now, how do you rewind? How do you rewind? Children of the 80s and 90s know this trick because we know the pain of a one-way motor in a cassette mechanism. It's very simple. You simply flip the tape over to rewind the other side. So basically you're fast forwarding the side you don't want, which as you would guess, in effect, rewinds the side that you do want. So we fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, flip the tape over. Did we get, no, not quite enough. We need to do it some more. So we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. And we're gonna go back and forth until it's just right. Ah, the beginning of this song, we can listen to Michael Jackson's Bad Yet One More Time. I like how they have this speaker grill down here and there's a couple of openings. I don't know if there are, are really any speakers in there or not. You know what we'll do? Before we connect the speakers, we'll just give it a listen and see if we can hear anything out of there. We've got the volume and power knob right there. Press five seconds. That probably saves them a lot of grief in terms of their support department, people calling, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So let's put a sticker on there, press five seconds. We've got a tuning dial right here. That will be most definitely a digital tuner. We've got a folder button for the MP3 files. We'll look at that in a minute. A mode switch, uh, record and delete. You can record onto your SD card or your USB. That would be over here. We'll look at those in a minute. Off of anything that's going on, tape, vinyl, CD, or even the radio, which is pretty cool as well. The main display screen, if I remember right, that's gonna be blue. There's the CD drawer, it's kind of interesting. It just kind of sticks out there. There's no flap or anything to cover it. There's an aux in, so you can connect uh, anything via that aux in. There's a headphone jack as well for private listening. It defaults into radio mode. We can go through the different modes here. AM, it does have AM radio, that's good. USB, SD card, compact disc, Bluetooth, I forgot to mention that, you can connect your uh, phone to this and use it as a Bluetooth speaker. It's not going to transmit out Bluetooth, but it will receive Bluetooth. Tape, and then phonograph. So yeah, and it starts spinning right away up top there. You can't quite see it, but it did indeed stop. Oh, and aux, you can't forget that. But start with the radio. Let's go ahead and see if there are any speakers built into this. I'm going to 
tune this to a station that I know is on and available. So unfortunately, there are no speakers down below here. That is for looks only. It still looks good. So it's definitely a digital tuner. Let's give the sound test. This Mackey Auditorium. I'm Eden Lane. CPR News. CDOT is in the midst of training officers across the state in how to detect DUIs. It's got presets you can build in. Five is clearing, but there's still some reduced speeds to about Arapaho Road. Both sides of 25. It's actually very punchy and loud. Very, very punchy. We're just listening ambiently in the room. Sound two seventy has the usual congestion between. <laughs> I do have the antenna unfurled in the back. Reception seems pretty good. Definitely isn't gonna blow you away with the bass, but it's got that radio punchy. This is like, you know when you go to like a, a store and they like a small store like a mom and pop shop and they've got a stereo in the corner playing radio like actual radio and it's got sort of that punchy fm sound i don't know if you know what i'm talking about but it's got that sound i like that it's the uh, it's the compression it's the radio station compression it sounds good comes across well and that's how it works it compresses all the frequencies of music down into a narrower range that these speakers can replicate. And I, I'm predicting that we will say at the end of this that the radio sounded better than anything. That's my guess, that's just a guess, but something to be aware of. Okay, so it's got AM on there. I'm not gonna bore you with AM, but you could do that as well. It's good that it's got AM because uh, not a lot of new equipment now supports AM broadcast. And you know, for my friends in the UK, there's no DAB on here. And for my friends here in the United States, there's no HD radio as well. This is basic analog audio, albeit with a digital tuner. Okay, let's go on to another format. Let's uh, go to USB, why not? Since we're here, it, USB is next. Let's go ahead and insert a USB stick, give it a listen. Okay, time to test out the USB and SD functionality, the playback functionality. I'm not gonna test the record today, but just be aware, it will record an MP3 of fairly low quality, probably 128K, so it will work, but it will not be the highest quality file, but it's still cool that you can use this to duplicate all these different formats. Uh, let's start with the USB. I'm going to use this kind of wacky looking credit card style USB card from CES 2020. Man, we gotta get back out to CES and see all the good stuff. They just finished CES 2023. I can't believe it's been so long since we've been there. So I'm gonna put this SD card in. It says card, let's see if it will recognize it or if we have to flip over to the right input. Oops, I just passed it. Let's try that again, USB. And it, you would think it would start playing no, no, just no, <laughs> okay. And maybe I need to put this in the other way. I probably should have used a regular USB card, but I did, okay, there we go. So it's recognizing it, I needed to put it with the teeth up, as it were. Now I've got three files on here. I've got an MP3, a WMA, and a WAV file. So I'm guessing it'll only play the MP3, but let's let's find out. What sort of accommodations would you like? I can offer you a fairly wide choice. Okay, interesting. So that is actually the WAV file. That is from Sound of Music, or not Sound of Music, that is from White Christmas, actually. And I'm surprised it plays WAV file. So you could... Play pretty high quality audio on here. Let's go ahead and try skipping. This is, oh, it even says WMA. Awesome. So it plays the WMA. By the way, so far, what you're hearing is just mono. I, I will do a stereo test on the vinyl. And then skipping forward here to MP3. You would hope it would play MP3. Yeah. Sounds good. And right here, what we're doing isn't really testing out the sound quality of these files as much as just compatibility. So let's go ahead and go over to the SD card. Should be the same exact thing. Error! Okay, so maybe I've got a formatting error with my card there. I'm guessing that's probably nothing to do with the unit. But we know that it is compatible with those formats. Actually, this is a brand new SD card. I have not formatted it yet, so we'll just skip that for now. 
and move on to something else. Let's go ahead and try out the compact disc. I am going to flip the mode switch to CD and I'm going to hit the eject button, which is right there. And we've got a lightweight plastic tray design. And let's go ahead and put a CD in there. Hopefully something that will not bother the copyright bots that much. Should start playing automatically. Curious how rich and full this sound is. Okay. Quieter than the other inputs. Okay, we can skip through it. Okay, it seems to do the trick. Okay, now on tape mode, go ahead and insert our cassette. It should start playing automatically. Wow, got a lot of buzz on there. Now it is possible we're picking up interference from the lights, from other things, hard to say, but yeah, that's kind of buzzy, kind of noisy. Let's fast forward again. To fast forward, you press that in halfway, and then you press it again to bring it out, and it will go back into play mode, or it should. Hmm, doesn't seem to be doing. Man, that doesn't sound great. Okay, there it's fast forwarding, I can hear it now. Okay, so we're fast forwarding to bring it out of fast forward. So yeah, wow and flutter on these types of tape decks isn't gonna be great. Should be functional though. Man, there's this buzz. Yeah, it's a bummer. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our stroboscopic disc on here. And go ahead and start with 33 RPM would make sense. So we'll be looking right there. And okay, not too bad. The lines are marching a little bit to the left. So it is a tad bit fast, but that's not terrible because when you drop the needle on a record, it will introduce a little bit of drag. So it would probably settle down to pretty close to perfect. So that's good. Let's go ahead and go to 45 now and see what our 45 RPM setting is at also a tad bit fast but would probably settle into perfect and then finally 78 at the top well that's not half bad the speed on this thing is pretty dang right where i'd want it to be i would be concerned if it was dead accurate on here that once that needle drops and introduces that drag that it would play a tiny bit slow so this is right where i would calibrate this if i needed to do so now let's test the downforce of the cartridge, the stylus, the tone arm. Make sure this is zeroed out and we're going, oops, I forgot how it drops like a rock. And there you go, 4.8, 4.9, right under five grams. That, my friends, is perfectly acceptable. So it tracks appropriately. It has almost perfect speed, if not absolutely perfect speed. For a test subject, we will be using this gorgeous record. It is a light, lavender color it looks a little lighter in color on camera than it does to the naked eye but this is a beautiful record from our friends at vinyl moon this is volume 84 basically they're mixtapes of music on vinyl record which is just pretty dang cool okay what do we have going on right here oh this is interesting so another point and i was going to bring this up the other issue we had with this before was an extreme tight fit of the record over here. Let's get a closer shot of that. As you can see, this is extremely tight over here. And in fact, you kind of have to tip the record under this little piece right here in order to get it to fit. Look how tight of a fit that is. That's like a one millimeter gap. <laughs> if you had a record that was punched off center, I could see it, you running the risk of of that rubbing on that post there that tone arm rest shelf post so yeah that is the same so basically both red flags from before have not been mitigated it's still no damping in the tone arm and there's still an extreme clearance issue not so extreme that it doesn't play but it's a tight tight fit oh yeah one more thing is the cartridge alignment was out let me uh let's take a look at the cartridge alignment while we're down here close Okay, so this one is better than the other one, but it's not perfect. If you can see that cantilever there 
is sort of tilted to the right. And because of that, the needle itself is at an angle. So that's not ideal whatsoever. However, on this level of equipment, it's not, it's just not gonna hear it. You're not gonna hear it on this level of equipment. Of equipment. Even with the headphone jack, I would be surprised if you could hear that. The cartridge alignment looks proper. As you can see, the bottom of the red piece looks okay. So if we put a new stylus housing, that would be the whole red piece and everything attached to it on there, we could most likely correct that. They are made in mass. And when I say mass, I don't mean Massachusetts, I mean mass production because those are made very fast and very much by the millions. So there's going to be, you know, bad units in there, which is why this like three for five bucks. It's a cheap, cheap part, which is a bummer because it's like the most important part of this whole setup. And unfortunately this one was uh, made in such a way that the needle is not straight in the groove. <laughs> Absolutely properly impedance match. So that's good. I'm surprised it actually sounds really not half bad at all. It sounds good. Pleasantly surprised. Okay, so what are my thoughts at the end of the day? I think that we definitely had a few issues that we talked about, but there was some very good aspects of this unit as well that we experienced together throughout the test, including the record player sounding fantastic, the radio, and that file compatibility for the SD card and the USB slot. That was really, really cool. This thing definitely can do a lot of different things. So let me know down in the comments below what you think. If you have one of these, if you would consider getting one, all that good stuff. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it. Just thank you for being there. Thank you for all the support. Got a lot of fun things coming your way, but that's gonna do it for now. So happy record, honey, and we'll see you next time.